It's, it's got a lot of um, allergy-causing stuff in it. So, ragweed. So it's not good for me to swim in right now. But undeniable, un I needed to swim. And yet, I hadn't been to the gym in a couple of days because I had a very high volume Friday and Saturday, super high volume of work, so I was recovering. And I needed to do something very specific at the gym. So when I did this, and I still had this urge to go swimming. So I finished up the gym work and I changed into swim trunks and I drove all of about 10 minutes down the Coeur d'Alene Lake, which is one of God's greatest gifts to us, all of us. I mean, we all have common giftings. I wish you could get to see it. And I went to the lake. It was you know, a lot of people there, a very hot day, 92 degrees. And I was headed to swim and I heard my name. I turned around and there were some families from the gym, a couple of women and their husbands, and they had their kids there on this beach where I used to swim when I was a little kid. They said, weren't you just in the gym? I said, yeah, it's just, you know, you pull down, so I'm sure I said, well, I'll swim 800 meters. And I turned out to swim five because I was a little tired. But in that water, in that setting, I had such utter joy at the temperature changes. Sometimes the water's warm, sometimes it's cold. At the act of gliding, kind of, I'm not a great swimmer. Great swimmers glide, I don't, through the water. I had that feeling. And then I read about the new earth and Randy Acorn's description of it, writing for the C.S. Lewis Foundation, that we'll have bodies. I knew that. But he also says we'll have lakes. And I guess I knew that. And mountains to climb. And work to do. And meetings. But all about the kingdom. And I thought, I'll be able to swim forever and hike forever and glorify God forever in this new earth and he with us. Remember in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And I believe God values words and values us, loves us. This has been a Disciples View. My name is Todd Herman. God be with you. expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. It's a man that was full of life. Bert Harper of Exploring the Word. He loved the Word of God and it came across in the classroom. Dr. Travis put in my heart a desire to know God through his word. And that's what we're trying to do on Exploring the Word. Exploring the Word, weekday afternoons at 3 Central on American Family Radio. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. American Family News, almost keep here. Tampa is bracing for Hurricane Dahlia, which could end up being a historic weather event. Britta Merwin is in Tampa with the latest. The hurricane is expected to rapidly intensify in the Gulf of Mexico before it makes a landfall in the Big Bend, pretty far away from Tampa Bay. The Tampa Bay is in for big impacts, especially when it comes to storm surge. With a landfall across the Big Bend of Florida, that positions Tampa Bay in a very vulnerable spot where we could have life-threatening storm surge, possibly up to seven feet of water. Evacuation orders have been called. It is, of course, very important to heed those warnings. In Tampa, Britta Merwin, Fox Weather. The California School Board President is responding to a lawsuit from the State Attorney General Chris Woodward has more. Chino Valley Unified School District wants parents to be notified when their children want to change gender identities or pronouns. California Attorney General Rob Bonta says this will forcibly out so-called transgender students and threaten their well-being. But school board president Sonia Shaw told AFN they are not even citing a specific law. And the sad part is I've offered a conversation with I call them the political cartel of Newsom, Boston, and Thurman, and they don't want that. 
so to me, they're just trying to do whatever they can to stop us, and this is just one of their their little tactics. I think it's embarrassing, though, because, you know, we have cr these criminals walking free, and they're trying to send the message that parents are dangerous to their children. Charles said parents in other states better be paying attention because, in Charles' words, whatever happens in California goes everywhere else. Parents have a right, a constitutional right, and I would tell them to pay attention and get involved because technically we're all in this together. I'm Chris Woodward. A Michigan abortionist has died, yet spent his final day doing what he did best. More on that from Charlie Butts. Thomas Gordon, who had committed abortions for 36 years, has died at age 74 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Lynn Mills of Pro-Life Michigan tells AFN. He has met God, he has seen his face, and he has to answer for all those children since 1987, 36 years of child slaughter. She says pro-life sidewalk counselors at his heritage clinic for women on a regular basis spoke to him about leaving the business and repenting. We want them to repent before anything like this happens. Always leave the abortion industry. Always seek help. And above all, put those weapons of mass destruction down. Stop the killings and give your heart to Christ. Police fired.